All right. Once again, I know I always say this, that this should be a short video, but I really am going to try and keep it as short as I possibly can. And I want to look at um, a specific part of mens rea and actus reus that's called coincidence. And what we mean by the term coincidence, when it exists, when it doesn't exist, and how the courts have overcome the problem where coincidence quite obviously doesn't exist, but there, there, there should be liability if that, that all of that makes sense. So I'll try and do it as quickly as I possibly can. So it is a, it's a way in which we look at bringing together the mens rea element and the actus reus element. And if you remember, we have our um, criminal liability equation, actus reus plus mens rea, um, in the absence of a defence equals criminal liability. What we're going to do is look at that first part now, which is how both the actus reus and the mens rea, in short, have to occur together. And I'm going to illustrate the problem that we have by looking at this diagram here. If you imagine the top half of this arrow is the uh, actus, let me put the size of my pen up, is the actus reus element, and the bottom part is the mens rea element. And in this diagram on the left, you can see there's not a problem. The defendant stabs his girlfriend to death during an argument, and at the time that he stabs her, he does so intending to kill her. Very simply put, you have actus reus and mens rea occurring at the same time, and that's a straightforward illustration of criminal liability. The problem on the right poses us some additional work. The defendant stabs the victim during an argument and leaves the house. This triggers a dormant ailment and he dies five minutes later. So there we have actus reus. What we don't have here is mens rea. He doesn't mean in this instance, he doesn't have the intent to either kill or cause GBH. But what happens is some time later, not realising that the victim is dead, the defendant's anger grows and grows and he returns home and stabs the victim through the duvet intended to kill him. Mens rea now complete. Our problem is that actus reus has occurred with no mens rea and mens rea has occurred with no actus reus, which means that technically no criminal liability. Now that cannot be the case. What this video looks at is how the courts have overcome that. So let's just take a quick look at the background. This has been down and is an issue of case law. We have overcome the issue of coincidence and the problems with coincidence through a series of case law. And the general rule is that the two elements, that is actus reus and mens rea, must coincide. Okay, so they must coincide. That means that the guilty mind must occur at the same time or must be present at the same time that the act is committed. Central tenet of English law. The guilty mind must be present at the same time that the act is committed. Now this is also known as contempor... Well, I forgot how to spell it. Contemporane, contemporaneity. So you may see it written on your exam papers as either coincidence or contemporaneity. Either way, it means the same thing. It means actus reus and mens rea occurring at the same time. And as we've seen, the problem is, is that there is an issue where there's a time lapse. And that can be one of either ways. It can be mens rea happening before the actus reus or actus reus happening before the mens rea. And we'll look at both and we'll look how the courts have dealt with both of these. Because what they've done is the courts have modified the rule to make sure that a series of linked acts or omissions can be treated as one continuous act. And it's slightly different for whether the mens rea or the actus reus comes first, and we'll look at those two in turn. So to start with, we'll look at the actus reus occurring before the mens rea. And there's a very famous case um, in which it, uh, that we use for this, and that's Fagan versus Metropolitan Police Commissioner. And what happens in Fagan is that Fagan is driving a uh, car and inadvertently drives the car onto the foot of a police officer. At that point, the actus reus has occurred. The car is on the police officer's foot. 
but Fagan knows nothing about it, and therefore there can be no mens rea. The policeman complains, and Fagan, in no uncertain terms, tells him to go away, and leaves the car on the policeman's foot. The moment that the car is left on the policeman's foot, the mens rea is complete. Unfortunately, the actus reus has already occurred. So you have actus reus happening first, mens rea happening second. The two don't coincide, and on the face of it, there can be no criminal liability. And I've put it into um, a diagram such as this one here. So the defendant drives the car onto the policeman's foot, but he's unaware that the car has made any contact with the policeman's foot. So this is the place to start here. So he drives onto the policeman's foot. At that time, so we have actus reus. But at that time, the defendant's unaware that the car has made any contact with the policeman's foot. So there's no liability because there's no mens rea. If there's no mens rea, there's no liability. The defendant becomes aware of the situation, but refuses to move. The mens rea ar arises at that point. So we've got mens rea then. What the court does is the court says that in this second instance, the actus reus continues until the contact ceases. What that means is they have treated the actus reus as a single continuing act. And that's the phrase to remember, a single continuing act. So Fagan tells us that there is a single continuing act. Now, there's a second way, of course, because that's a positive act. Driving the car, refusing to move it, is a positive act. What happens in the case of an omission? Well, for that, we'll take a look at Miller. Everybody remember the case with the tramp? Goes to sleep with a cigarette, wakes up to find the cigarette is causing his bed to smoulder, rather than, and at that point, he has a duty, he has created a dangerous situation, so therefore he has a duty to get, put the fire out and to stop the fire, but he doesn't, he gets up and moves to a different room and the fire causes damage. Now, what happens in that case? Because the actus reus, the fire has already started, but, his mens rea doesn't actually occur. Let's have a look at the diagram. So, he drops a cigarette onto a mattress in a derelict house. Actus reus present. But he's unaware of this because he's asleep. No mens rea. He awakes, notices that the mattress is burning, and does nothing. Mens rea now present. But these two haven't coincided. What the court have said is that they are basing liability on a failure to act after creating a dangerous situation means that this continues as a single continuing act. So, where the actus reus occurs before the mens rea, the court has stated that they will treat the actus reus as a single continuing act, which means that at this point, it coincides. Similarly so, at this point, it coincides. Okay, now, Let's look at the other situation. What happens when the mens rea occurs before the actus reus? And the case that we'll look for that is a, um, it's a South African case called Tabo Mele. And in Tabo Mele, the defendant and accomplices took the victim to a hut and beat him over the head, intending to kill him. So the mens rea is present at the beginning. He doesn't die. And they roll his body over a cliff, cliff sorry, to make the death appear accidental. In fact, the victim survives both the beating and the fall from the cliff, but dies from exposure at the base of the cliff sometimes later. So let's have a look. What does that tell us? That tells us that, I know we've got a different um, timeline here, what that effectively tells us is that in the case of um, uh, Tabo Mele, the mens rea occurs here, the actus reus occurs here and you've got this gap. And what the courts do in this instance is they say the single transaction view. 
And a defendant cannot have the intention to kill because a defendant cannot have the intention to kill if he believes the, the, the victim is already dead, the person is already dead, for instance. The courts decide that it all makes up one single transaction. So in Tarbo Mele, the beating, the rolling off the cliff, the dying of exposure is all one single transaction. And therefore, when the actus reus actually occurs, the mens rea is already present because it's one. So the mens rea occurs at the very start because the single transaction occurs at the start with the beating. Let's have a look at a different case to illustrate this with our diagram. And we'll look at R.V. Church. And Church is a case in which the defendant took the victim, um, and the victim's a married woman, to a van for sexual purposes. He didn't do particularly well, and she took the mickey out of him. She mocked him. What, and, and what he did, um, he was well, she, she slapped him, and the defendant then beat her. He knocked her unconscious. He was concerned that she had died, couldn't revive her, and threw her body into the river. Okay? Then she drowns. His mens rea occurs before she dies. So in terms of our timeline, the defendant attacks the victim, she does not die. So there's no actus reus. That's the actus reus element, not present. But he intends to cause a GBH that's satisfying the mens rea of murder. Under the single transactions, for it, or the, of course, then what happens, he throws her into the river to dispose of the body. As a result of that, the victim dries, drowns, actus reus present. So the mens rea is here, actus reus is here. The defendant did not intend to kill the victim at this point because he believed she was already dead. But it was held that he was liable as the whole incident was a series of events designed to cause death. A single transaction. So even though mens rea is here, even though the actus reus isn't present, this is one single transaction. So the mens rea occurs at the same time as the actus reus. Okay? So... That's as simple as that. The problem is that when the two don't coincide, if the actus reus occurs before the mens rea, then the courts will take the single continuing act. If the mens rea occurs before the actus reus, then the courts take the single transaction view. Either way, the defendant is liable, even if there is a slight gap in the difference between mens rea and actus reus.